The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. Why doesn't God do something? I think He's already doing something, don't you? Yes, He's up to something. We had a merry-go-round at the school for the blind. and We had a bar around it. You just had to grab on and hold on. That's what I'm doing, just holding on. And letting God ride me around a little while. After He gets through doing that, He'll just take me on up. The book of Habakkuk is it's a prophetic book. And in that book we find a man that's talking to God and God is talking to a man just like me and you. Amen. And he has some, some notions. You know, we got, we got that too. We have notions and potions and lotions and, and, and stuff like that. But we have some of these wonderings. We wonder why things are like they are and how it seems like sometimes that God is just not doing anything. Well, chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 talks about that. O Lord, how long shall I cry? Thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. Looks like evil is winning and good is going down. It looks like, it's not correct English, but it's a good message. Looks like the better you are, the better off you are in this life. Looks, that's the way it looks like. It just looks like you're, you're showing me all this grievance. I'm seeing all this violence and there's things around us in this world that are going on we don't understand. We're beholding grievance. Why are you showing me all this spoil and violence? People are are not acting right. They're those who are raising up strife and causing contention. And and it causes you sometimes to come up with things that are right, but are not exactly right. It's kind of like this. The law is slacked. Well, we certainly see that. Judgment doth never go forth. Well, actually, there are some good judgment every once in a while, but we can't see the good... Because of the forest. Sometimes it, it seems like that evil is prevailing. The wicked is compassing about the righteous. Shouldn't it be the other way around? The righteous ought to be coming out, but it seems like the wicked is winning out. And it seems like that God is not doing things that we would like for them to happen. We just want something to happen. Something to take place. God is working, regardless of surrounding circumstances. Verse 5 of chapter 1 tells us that. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. God is saying in effect, it might look like to you that I'm not doing anything, but I am doing something. I am up to something. As a matter of fact, God didn't have to wake up this morning and say, oh man, I believe I need to come up with something or things are kind of going wrong. God didn't do that at all. God knew yesterday what was going to happen today. God knew the day before what was going to happen yesterday. He knew about that earthquake that was coming. He knew about it. It didn't catch Him by surprise. By the way, where were you? Don't tell me now because we don't have time for it, but where were you when you were shaking? There's a whole lot of shaking going on, brother. I mean, how do you think a man's supposed to feel laying in the bed with his babies in his arms in the bed shaking. Huh? Give her a kiss, stroke her on the ears, and then rub her four legs and tell her everything's going to be alright. No, that's alright. Y'all ain't in the laughing mood. Y'all in the, Holy, y'all in the Holy Ghost mood. I'd rather have that any time. Some of you just ain't got there yet, but that's alright. you get it after a while. It didn't say look in the church. It said behold among the heathen. Look out there in the world and see what I'm doing. We know what God's doing in the church. We saw that this morning. He's moving and working and He's speaking and He's he's juicing us. He juices us every once in a while, you know. He kind of blesses us and gives us a little holy squirt every once in a while. Sometimes we had a little gush. We had gush this morning. Not just holy squirt, we had a little gush. God's able to do that. He, he's blessing the church. 
But he said, look out there in the world and look at what I'm doing. Regard, wonder marvelously. I am working a work. God is in the midst of the storm we talked about the other week. He is the one who has His way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of His feet. God is in control. I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. Now that for them, that meant that I'm going to raise up this nation. They're going to come and they're going to take you into captivity. The enemy. And, and things are going to happen. I'm working a work. But you're not going to believe the work that I do because that which goes into captivity, I'm going to turn right around one of these days. I'm going to bring you back into your land. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to lift you up. And that's what God is saying today. He said, do you think that all this destruction that's coming around and going around on, around you, do you think that's what I want to happen? That might be what needs to happen right now, but that's not really what I'm up to. I'm up to something more than that. I'm up to working a work. God is about working the work of salvation. He wants to save us today. I'm up to working the work of sanctification. He wants to break the power of sin over your life and let God sanctify you. He can sanctify you right now in the name of Jesus. You don't have to have an elder to touch you. You don't have to have a prayer line. You don't have to have an altar. Right there where you are, God can sanctify you right now in the name of Jesus. He said, I'm up to the work of filling with the Holy Ghost. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost right now. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what name you got over the door. All you got to do is believe. If you believe, He will fill you. If you have a hunger and a thirst after righteousness, the Bible said, you will be filled. Those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, He will fill you. He's working. He's up to something. We know and love God, but sometimes we still struggle to believe. The New Testament says it like this, I believe, help thou my unbelief. We love Him. We know that we love Him. We know Him. He's our Lord. But sometimes we still struggle to believe. Oh, we believe. Man, right now with a service like this morning, you could, you could charge hell with a squirt gun. When you get out there in the, in, in the real world and you face the doctors and nurses, you face the, the reports and you face the bills and you face all that out there in the real world and, and the house starts shaking, then it gets a little harder sometimes to believe. And the prophet says, Art not thou from everlasting, O Lord, my God? Mine Holy One, we shall not die. See, He's encouraged. He started out by saying, well, why isn't God doing something? And now He's encouraged. We should not die. We're going to be alright. God's going to help us. Hallelujah. O Lord, Thou hast ordained them for judgment. Amen. And Almighty God, Thou hast established them for correction. I know what you're doing now. You're just trying to get our attention, Lord. You're just trying to speak to us. Amen. And then He does like we do. You know, when we're in here, we just shout and praise the Lord, and then we go downstairs and start talking negative again. Listen to Him. Thou art of pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. He still sounds pretty good, but now he's getting a little bit in the natural again. He says, Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? Lord, it just looks like evil is prevailing. Make us men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. Things are falling apart, Lord. It looks like we're just like animals sometimes. Well, wait a minute now. I thought you were talking about me like I'm an everlasting God and I'm going to take care of you and I'm going to watch out for you and I'm not going to leave you and I'm not going to forsake you. Then you turn right around and start talking about your sickness, start talking about your failure, start talking about your pain, how many arthritis pills you take, how many joints that hurt, and all this kind of thing. We struggle sometimes to believe. On the one hand, we love God. On the other hand, we feel the pain gnawing away at us. What do we do? It's alright to pay attention to the natural as long as it doesn't contradict God's Word. But when it contradicts God's Word, you've got to throw away with the natural and go with the Word of God. Amen. God gives us faith to stand when everything is falling apart and life doesn't make sense. Amen. This wonderful classic verse, chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. 
It doesn't matter sometimes if I can understand it. Sometimes if I can explain it. You might not can tell people all about it. But I may not have all the answers. But I do have the answer. And I know when everything else is falling apart around me, i still got faith. I can still stand when the storms of life are raging. When the house is shaking. When things are uncertain. I still have faith. And my faith will cause me to stand. Who shall come on? I know that my faith will hold me when the storm is raging around me, when the wind is blowing, when there's uncertainty in the politics, when there's uncertainty, uneasiness in the economic situation, when nations are rising against nation. I know that the Word of God is still true. It says, Jesus is Lord. Soon and very soon, we shall see the King. He's coming again. He will take care of those who put their faith and their trust in Him. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. By faith, He will cause you to stand. By faith, He will cause you to rise above your circumstances. By faith, you can make it. It's faith that saved you. Faith that sanctified you. Faith that Spirit filled you. Faith that will keep you through this life. And faith that will guide you and lead you into the arms of Jesus one day. Faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He causes us and gives us faith to stand. When life doesn't make sense, everything is falling apart, you still have your faith. And you can hold on to faith. Sometimes, we as God's people may wish for wrong, but we end up begging for mercy. I've heard preachers say before, man, if I was God, I'd burn them up. Aren't you glad I'm not God? Man, we just get so frustrated with the Lord. Just wipe them out. Won't you do something about it? And then when God starts doing something, we say, oh, 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 wait, my Lord. O oh, Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh, Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Amen. Yeah, we, end, we start up. We want God to... To do something. We want Him to slap them on, in the jaws in the name of Jesus. And that, that's not going to work too good. You don't slap the jaws in the name of Jesus. You cast out devils in the name of Jesus. You lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. But you don't slap jaws in the name of Jesus. You need to use the name of Jesus to hold, get a hold of you to the point where you feel like you don't want to slap jaws anymore. Instead of slapping jaws, you want to hug necks. Jesus gives a hold to you. He got a hold to a man one night and just blessed him and saved him and blessed him. And this man, he didn't have nobody else around him to hug. So he grabbed a telephone pole and hugged a telephone pole. God will bless you so much you'll hug a telephone pole. Sometimes we wish for wrong, but we end up begging for mercy. Have mercy. I heard your speech and was afraid. Do you know when God speaks, I don't care how long you've been in the holiness. I don't care how long you... When God speaks, there's a fear and a dread that comes over your soul. I can't explain it. You're not scared of Him like you have to run from Him like you've done something bad. But there's a fear of God. There's an awesomeness of God. When He speaks like He did today and He's speaking in His Word right now, there's an awesomeness that comes over your soul. And I've heard your speech and I was afraid. Oh, Lord, revive Your work in the midst of the years. God is not going to let His work go unnoticed. God knows every time when the sun was hot and you knocked on doors for Jesus. God knows in everything you've done, every meal that you've served, everything you've done for His name. You don't do good works to be saved, but you do good works because you are saved, and God knows it. He knows if you get to the point physically, and your sight, and your hearing, and your mobility, and whatever it is that you can't do that anymore, God knows all about that. He hasn't forgotten you. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. God is a merciful God. The Bible says, Mercy rejoiceth against judgment. James chapter 2, verse 13. We want people to be judged. But we have to get to that point where, yes, we we get frustrated and we get bumfuzzled and we get things that gets out of proportion with us and we don't understand it. But we are to be merciful people. Be ye merciful. For your, as your Heavenly Father also is merciful, Jesus said. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. 
Blessed are those who show mercy. They will obtain mercy. Mercy rejoices against judgment. If we want to escape judgment, the only way is to latch on to mercy. Mercy. It's just like when your daddy whipped you. Well, many of us, he didn't whip us. He whooped us. You know, a whipping's bad enough, but a whooping's a whole lot worse. When your daddy got a hold of you and he whooped you, you ran away from him. You tried to run. And that's the worst thing you can do. Amen. Best thing to do is just latch on to him. Get up close to him. And that's when people are about God. When God starts dealing with them, they try to run away from him. Worst thing in the world you can do. Come on. Best thing in the world you can do is just get scrooch up close to him. Amen. Scrooch up close to Jesus. Say, Lord, I love you. Scrooch up close to him. And he won't whip you as much. Why should he? He's not going to whip you just for the fun of it. He don't have fun in whipping you. He wants to hug you. He wants to love you. He wants to squeeze you. You just have to forgive us holiness people, Pentecostal people, whatever. We just we just have to put our, our head in the man's lap every once in a while. Just let him love on us a little bit. We love him and he loves us. We just happen to have enough religion to bless us and not bug us. Thank you. When God saved me, He gave me something I could feel. It's not by feeling. I'm not saved by feeling, but I'm saved and i got feeling to show it. God's shaking things up, brothers and sisters. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. And it ain't kind of Elvis Presley shaking. There's a Holy Ghost shaking. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. We don't know what a day may bring forth. I didn't know where my bed was going. I knew I was laying in it. It shook a little bit, and I said, I said, Oh Lord, this is like the tremor that we have. And Peggy was still working at AmeriCal. Then it shook some more, and I said, No, this is a whole lot worse than that, Lord. <laughs> then I got to praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, that's what you couldn't do. It's not me, you know, but this, that's what you can do. When you're right with the Lord, things start shaking around you, you just start praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 